As I've been preparing for this review, the question I've been asked the most about both the new Yao Legacy and the Soul Ride is, how do they compare to the Carver CX? And they actually don't compare to the Carver CX, they compare most closely to the Carver C5. So in this review, I'm going to review and compare the Carver C5, the Soul Ride, and the Yao Legacy together to hopefully help you make some buying decisions at home. So when I received these boards, I immediately saw that these were not my style and I couldn't do much with them. So the first thing that I did was I sent them down to my team of riders down in Southern California, and they were able to spend a lot of time on these in a lot of different environments and a lot of different styles to give you a good review from a rider's perspective. So here's how this review is gonna go. The first thing I'm gonna do is put these three boards into a bigger context so you can see where they fit into the bigger surf skate world. Next we'll have the review from my three riders, Joey Daly, Gabe Frager, and Laura Magore. Then I'll give you some more detailed comparisons between all three of these trucks and then I'll finish by showing you how to take all three of these trucks apart as well as how to do custom modifications for all three of them. After testing more than 70 surf skates with more than 30 different surf skate trucks, I boiled them down to what I believe are the top 10 surf skate trucks, and that's what you see here. And I organized them on a scale of what I call pure surf trainers on this side, down to street cruisers on that side with what I call hybrids in the middle. So what I call the pure surf trainer trucks are the Sweltech, the Curveboard, the Smooth Star Thruster D, the Aquilo, and the Spice Skate Spice Pilot Type X. These pure surf trainers have looser, flowier surf skate trucks, they're more responsive to upper body movements, and they're best used for pure surf training in small areas and on smooth surfaces. Then on this side of the scale you have what I call the street cruisers, so I categorize the Carver CX and the Slide as street cruisers. And what sets them apart from the pure surf trainers is that they have tighter, snappier trucks, and the biggest difference is that they generate a lot more forward momentum when you pump them, so they're more suitable for traveling for longer distances. So this really is a scale of versatility where I feel like you can do more things with the trucks on on this side of the scale. And then in the middle here, you have three what I call hybrids, and that includes the Yao Meraki, the Carver C7, and the Waterborne Surf Adapter. And by hybrid, I mean that they really can do it all. They're great for pure surf training, and they're also great for just regular non-surfer street cruisers like me. So where the Carver C5, Soul Ride, and Yao Legacy fit into this is clear over here. They're off of this scale of what I call the surf skate trucks, and they're kind of in their own category. And then further right of those, I have a traditional skateboard. So really, the category for these three is that they are hybrid or transition surf skates for traditional skateboarders. So the first thing I would say about these three boards is that if your only experience is on this side of the scale with these more traditional surf skate trucks, then I'm going to say you probably aren't going to enjoy these three as much. However, if you come from a more traditional skateboarding background, then I think that you might have a lot of fun on these three. So there's one main difference between these three trucks and the Carver CX, and I wanted to show you this up close, and that is that these hangers are narrower than the Carver CX. And these narrow hangers make a very big difference. Essentially what they mean is the pumping is a lot less efficient, so you get a lot less forward momentum out of these three trucks than you do the CX or any other traditional surf skate truck. So you'll see that the Carver CX hanger is just under six and a half inches wide. Then you have the Carver CX, which is about a half inch narrower than the CX at about five and three quarters of an inch. And the Yao Legacy is the same width as the C5, about five and three quarters of an inch. And again, about a half inch narrower than the CX. And of all these three, the Soul Ride has the narrowest hanger at just under five and a half inches wide. Let me demonstrate what this hanger width means in terms of foot placement. So here is a Carver CX board. This is the Taylor Knox deck. And you can see my foot placement on that on a Carver CX deck. Now compare that to my foot placement on the Soul Ride, which has the narrowest hanger of these three. Here's the Yao Legacy. And here's the Carver C5. Let's start here. Which one of these three is your favorite and why? My favorite is the Soul Ride. I like that it sits low like a traditional skateboard. I like that the truck system has a kingpin that's hidden for grinding and the wheels are very good for slides and a lot of uh, that surfy motion as well. It's lighter weight than some of the other boards, so I like that piece of it. And I like that there's at least a little bit of a nose and a tail for dropping in 
um, and doing reverts. My favorite board is gonna be the Carver board right here. A few reasons why is this kind of takes me back to my old days here at the skate park and it feels something that I can get comfortable with as well as when I'm going slow I can kind of surf skate around and I could probably train on it. I'm not sure if it's the ideal deck for surf training because I'm more likely to try to do something like a kickflip or pop shove it or do an air on it or something and that's something that like I'm not as more I could do it on my normal surf skate but it's a little bit difficult as well as like going fakie a little bit better than the C7 truck or CX truck it just felt a little bit more smooth fakie but I'm still not gonna go do anything crazy going to switch I mean or going back to fakie this is also my favorite the carver with the C5 I feel like it gives you the most uh, durable and like wholesome feel like feels like the most traditional deck the setup gives you a lot of surf skate feel but if you want to get into those trick sessions and skate park sessions you just tighten up the trucks a little bit there's one issue the kingpin is a little higher than the front truck so if you do want to do some grinds you got to do a little bit of extra work by flipping the kingpin and reversing it upside down which of these do you find is the most versatile for you you can do the most things on them i would choose either the soul ride or the carver because of the deck specifically having a nose i feel like i can do obviously the surf skating fine on them because of the truck system but having the deck system also accommodate tricks with a nose and a tail is the most helpful for me i'm gonna agree kind of with lara but i'm still i mean either or the soul ride or the carver just for this deck because having a smaller nose nothing wrong with it but in this case, it's like kind of flat and small. I did a nose grab, I can still grab onto it, but it's almost like I'm grabbing onto the truck. So I'm less likely, I'm more likely to bail that trick. When I have something like this, I can grab right onto it and lock in. The most versatile, I really think it depends on like what you want to do. If you're looking for a traditional skate sash, maybe a pool or skate park, I feel like the carver with the C5s is the most versatile. But if you're down at the beach or just cruising kind of some flat ground, I feel like the Yao is uh, a little bit better you know I feel like this one gives you kind of a an open slate and a lot of uh, creative freedom which is your least favorite and why I would say the C5 on the Carver specifically the truck system is my least favorite because it is heavier and the kingpin sticking out my least favorite board it's hard to pick on this one but think probably the Yao just because going at high speeds I could still do it but I have to like control each truck if I'm on the back truck too much I'm going at a high speed I'm probably gonna wobble out if I'm on the front truck too much the other the other thing I might lean into my turn too much so it's kind of about proportion where other boards didn't have that problem so my least favorite is the soul ride just because I feel like with the system it's uh, a little bit inadequate I feel like it's a very light system and kind of back foot heavy. Whereas if you kind of put too much into the front, you kind of jackknife a little bit here and there. Another thing I don't like about uh, the Soul Ride deck, when you're thinking about a traditional skate, I, I love the concave. However, I do wish it had like a uh, longer nose as well, uh, just for various uh, tricks. So far we've been talking about the complete systems and what your favorite and least favorite are in the complete system. If we're to just isolate the feel of the truck, which one is your favorite and why? I like the Soul Ride truck system the best because it's the lightest and it's the best for grinds as I, I feel it's the best for grinds because there's no pins in the way. The only problem I will say is there is a little bit of hitting of the kingpin in the back. So that's maybe like one downside, but overall I like this system the best. I think my favorite truck is the Yao truck. The reason why is like I can grind it and I mean this one could still get in the way, but so far I haven't had any problems grinding. It seems like I gotta get a lot of speed to grind it, but once I lock in, it's really it's really nice. My favorite truck? or the most preferred i think would be the yao i think it gives those looking for the traditional skate sesh the most adequate uh capabilities you're not gonna damage the inner kingpin or the bolt you're gonna be able to stall and get a good 5-0 and both 50 50s 
I think that the Yao truck itself is the most preferred for a traditional skater. Even though you have your clear personal favorites, if you were at a skate shop and you were talking to a traditional skater who's trying to choose between these three, which one of those would you recommend to that person and why? I would probably recommend the Yao um, because I feel that there will be more ability to adjust how tight it is so you can move from your street deck to this hybrid board as well as it being lightweight um, and it's just very adjustable I feel like. Very good truck system for all of your street park trucks. I would definitely recommend the carver, this board to them. There would be a few things that could hold them back that I had to point out, but other than that, I, I could because this board is going to be the most familiar to skating. Now, going fake, he's going to be a little different, and just this getting in the way, you, that might upset them. But besides that, you could do kick flips, tray flips, pop shove it, take it down the stairs, as well as carve around the city with it. In my opinion, it really depends on uh, what the rider is going to be doing. If they want to go and skate some uh, bowls uh, and just kind of maybe hit the coping, maybe not do huge grinds, then I think the Carver with the C5s would be the most comfortable. If your traditional riding style is kind of like old school boneless, you know, getting kind of like flip tricks with your finger flips and whatnot, uh, I think that the Yao is uh, the best bet. And then if you're like a old school traditional skater, kind of just maybe skating some stairs, want to do some grinds, I think the uh, Soul Ride gives uh, some of the best options. There's like one point that we didn't really talk about, and it's basically um, comparing these trucks at a high speed when carving a bowl or landing, maybe even a landing stairs or going down a transfer and just making the land, but especially when going on the transition at the bottom of the ramp before I go up to the top of the ramp. I noticed that riding the Soul Ride or the Yao, that at the high speed, if I'm not fully committed to have my weight right, then this trick wants to like jackknife or just spin out or just get kind of wobbly. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't really notice that with this, with the Carver one specifically. So you find the C5 to be more stable than the others um, at high speeds and for drop-ins and things like that? Yeah, yeah, that most definitely. Now let me walk you through some head-to-head -head comparisons of all these three trucks on several different variables. And the first thing that I want to point out is wear and tear after being ridden a lot. So if you come up close and look at these, you'll see that all of them have worn pretty uniformly, honestly. You can see how all of them have, you know, some damage in the middle of the decks here, but all very typical damage. One of the most important things I want to mention about the wear and tear is how well each of these can grind on coping. So if you look up close at both the Yao Legacy and the Soul Ride, you'll see that the way they're built, they can't grind this kingpin on the coping. So these can grind very well with no problem. Now the C5 is a little bit different because you can see that that kingpin nut actually protrudes a little bit above the hanger. And this creates a problem. When we were filming my riders, not too long into our ride, they actually were doing some coping grinds and sheared off this nut and the truck fell off completely. However, there is a way to fix this. You can completely reverse this kingpin and I'm gonna show you how to do that so that you can avoid this problem. So as long as you modify the C5 like I'm going to show you, you can do coping grinds on all three of these. The next variable I wanna compare is height. So I've lined these up with a traditional skateboard right here and you can see how the sole ride is the lowest of the three and it's pretty much as low as a traditional skateboard with very small wheels. Then the C5 is a little bit higher than the sole ride and then the Yao Legacy is a little bit higher than the C5 so it's the tallest of the three. The next variable to compare is weight. And on that variable, I actually weighed both the front and the rear trucks of all of these systems. And all of them are fairly similar, but the lightest is the Carver C5, weighing one pound, 9.7 ounces. Then the next lightest is the Soul Ride, weighing one pound, 11.6 ounces. And then finally, you have the Al Legacy, weighing in at one pound, 13 ounces for both the front and the rear trucks. The next variable to compare is range of motion. And on that front, I would say that the Legacy and the Soul Ride have have about equal range of motion and the Carver C5 has the least range of motion. So let me just demonstrate this up close. Here's the Yao Legacy, the turn on that. Here's the Soul Ride range of motion. 
which as you can see is pretty close to that legacy. And here's your range of motion on the Carver C5. And not only does it have less range of motion, but it's also stiffer than the others and harder to turn. The next variable to compare is rail to rail lean. And I would say that the Soul Ride and Legacy have about the same rail to rail lean and the C5 has the least amount of rail to rail lean. Here's the rail to rail lean on the Soul Ride. Here's the Yao Legacy. And here's the Carver C5. The next variable to compare is what I call pumpability. And by that, I just mean how well do they pump in comparison to some of these other typical surf skate trucks. None of these pump nearly as well as the other surf skate trucks because of that one main variable, which is that narrow hanger. But of these three, I would put them in this order of the Yao Legacy being the most pumpable and the feels the most like a traditional surf skate truck. And then followed by the Soul Ride. And then finally the Carver C5, which has the least range of motion and just is a lot stiffer than these other ones. So to give you a frame of reference on the pumpability, I would say that the Yao Legacy actually compares most in feel to this Bear Banger truck from Land Yachts. And you've seen me review this and I'm not a big fan of it, but that's because I'm coming from that more traditional surf skate truck side of things. But as I've said, if you come from a more traditional skateboarding background, then it's going to feel a lot looser to you and you might enjoy it. But the feel of both this Land Yachts Bear Banger and the Yao Legacy are kind of right between the traditional skateboard and surf skate trucks. The next variable to compare is price. And all of these are very similarly priced. The cheapest you can get is a Yao Legacy for between 185 and 195. You'll pay 192 for a complete Carver C5 system. And for a complete Soul Ride system, you'll pay between 195 and $205. And then the final variable I wanna compare is just all of the different complete models you can get with each of these different trucks. So what are all the different options you have? And for the Carver C5, you only have two options. They have a 32 inch model and a 32 two and a half inch model. And these decks are designed like traditional skateboards. So these are very much intended for traditional skateboarders to be that kind of transition or hybrid surf skate. Soul Ride offers four different models with some color variations within those models. And they range anywhere from 31.35 inches in length on this one that's more of like a traditional skateboard, all the way up to 33.25 inches in length on this one. So they have this model that's built more of like a traditional skateboard. It has the narrowest wheelbase and it has the shortest riser pads on it. Personally, I'm not a fan of these longer ones that have the bigger riser pads. And the reason being is because they're building them to compete with kind of more of a traditional surf skate, but because of the narrow hanger, they don't feel like a traditional surf skate. So personally, these are not models that I would ride, but that's just personal preference and you might enjoy those. Out of all these three, the one that has the most models is the Yao Legacy. If you look on their website, they actually have nine different models ranging from 26 and a half inches long to 30 32 inches long. I got this model here because it has the widest wheelbase, but one of the big things I want to note on this is that you'll see that my riders kept mentioning how there's no nose to grab and use for other things like they, you see on these other boards. But I want to point out that Yao has several models that have great noses on them, so don't let that be a deterring factor for you. If you want a nose on your deck, you can find a lot of these Yao models that have noses that work just great. As far as modifying the C5 goes, there are two ways to do it. The first is to replace your bushings. And the second way, which I'll show you, is to reverse your kingpin nut. You can actually flip this upside down to avoid grinding if you're doing any coping grinds. As far as replacing the bushings on the C5, these are actually the exact same size as what you'll find on the Carver CX. So you can find these CX C5 bushings on my website at surfskate.love forward slash shop. And we have them in five different durometers. The C5 bushings come standard in 89A durometer. So these yellow 90A in Riptide are going to be the closest match and feel to that. And if you want it to be a little bit softer, looser, and flowier, 
you could go down to the 87 and a half a pink or if you want it a little sharper and tighter you can go up to the 92 and a half a but when it comes to modifying the c5 i probably wouldn't go outside of the range of these three durometers right there the c5 pivot cups are also the same as the cx and so you can replace your pivot cups as well to eliminate any squeaking so to take this apart it's the exact same thing as the cx we're just going to remove our king pin nut right here we have our nut followed by a washer and a cone bushing, followed by our hanger, and then we have another cone bushing down here. And the same as on the Carver CX, your board side bushing is taller than your road side bushing. Now let me show you the trick for reversing this kingpin nut so that you can get that nut down if you're gonna do any coping grinds. And to do that, we're gonna to have to remove this base plate right here. Okay, so now we see our base plate here and you see that the kingpin nut goes through right to here. So what we're going to do is pound this kingpin out and then turn it upside down and then you're going to see that that's going to lower it. To pound this out we're going to use a hammer, but to avoid any damage to the kingpin what we're going to do is put this nut on over the top and leave it protruding just a little bit, sticking up over that kingpin. And then we're going to just take a hammer and you can lightly tap this out like so. And there we go. There's our kingpin. And now what we're going to do is reverse this kingpin so that the nut is actually going to be screwing on to this side here. And in order to reverse our kingpin, we're going to reassemble this whole truck. So the first thing we're going to do is take our taller bushing, and this is going to be our board side bushing right here, followed by the truck hanger, followed by the roadside bushing, which is the shorter bushing. Now this will go through here. Just go all the way through, then we'll turn this upside down, and here you're going to see that we have the threads protruding for the nut right here. And this is where we're going to put our nut, and you're going to see that as I tighten this down, the nut will cinch down into those channels and be held in place by those channels just like so. So I'm going to hold this nut in place with this finger here, while on this side I'll use my skate tool to tighten this down. And you can see how that is getting snug inside there. And just as when we have the kingpin the other way, we want to make sure that that nylock is engaged. If you can look at this up close, you'll see that that nylock isn't completely engaged. This is the one danger of reversing the kingpin that you need to be aware of, which is that if you don't have this nut tightened down enough, then this can loosen up as you're riding and you don't want that to happen. So we're going to go a little bit tighter on this. And now you're going to see that we have that flush with the top of the kingpin, and that'll make sure that that's not going to rattle off as you ride. And now you can see how this is much lower, and this enables you now to do coping grinds without worrying that you're going to shred off that kingpin nut. And now we'll just put this back on our deck. And there is our modified C5 with the kingpin reversed. And this way you can grind on this without having any issues with that kingpin nut. So you can see on the Soul Ride that it just provides one axis of rotation, so it turns just like this. So to take this apart, all we have to do is remove our kingpin nut here, and we'll see what's inside. And we have our kingpin nut here, and you'll see that there's actually a speed ring in here, because right inside here, as we pull this off, you're going to see that what's inside there is actually just a regular bearing set like what you see in wheel bearings there. So you've got bearings on top here and then underneath here you see how you have this unique shape here which corresponds with their special bushings that I'll show you. Then we look inside here and you've got this thing here. There's actually bearings inside here that allow this to spin freely in here. And then inside here you're going to see a little square metal piece right there. And then inside here you're going to find their special bushing. And you can see how it's two-sided. And this side with these four squares on the corners 
goes down like so. And the way to modify the sole ride is that they provide four different bushing durometers. So this green is the softest at 65A durometer. Then you've got the purple, which is 72A durometer. The red is 78A durometer. And the blue is 86A durometer. And the bushings will change the feel quite significantly, and that's just something you have to play with. It comes stock with the softest green in 65A. And the rear truck in the sole ride uses standard cone bushings, which makes them very easy to replace. So to put this back together, the first thing we'll do is take our bushing, and we wanna make sure that this side that has the four corner pieces protruding is facing down this way. Stick that in there. Then followed by this small metal piece here. Just goes right in there. Followed by this bearing set here. And you can see how this is two-sided. You have a flat edge here and then you have a rounded edge here. And that rounded edge is gonna go upside down like so, fitting right into that channel right there. And then this truck piece is going to slide right into that bushing like so. and then followed by the speed ring over that other bearing set there, followed by our kingpin nut. And we wanna make sure that this is snug without being too tight. We don't wanna be pushing down on those bearings too much. And that is our sole ride, just like that. So the legacy trucks are a traditional kingpin design, which means that you have the pivot point on the front of the truck with the kingpin on the back of the truck. And the rear truck of the legacy is basically a standard TKP. The only difference between this and what you find on the Meraki is that this hanger is a little bit narrower than what you find on the Meraki. So the way to modify the legacy is to replace your bushings with aftermarket bushings, whether it be Riptide or Venom or anything like that. And these are all standard sizes, but each one of them is a different size. So I'm gonna take apart both of these trucks and show you the sizes on them. Let's start with the front truck. And all we need to do is remove the kingpin here. And you'll notice that the kingpin is reversed. So instead of it sticking up this way and a nut being on top, it's facing down and it screws into the bottom down here. So all we have to do is remove this kingpin right here. And you're gonna see how this whole thing removes with the top bushing and washer on it right there, followed by our hanger and followed by the other bushing here. And then on the bottom side, they have a flat washer here. And then you can see inside here, this is where that kingpin screws in right there. Same thing with our rear truck, except the rear truck has it typical where your kingpin nut is on top. So we'll just remove this kingpin nut. And you'll see we have a bushing and a washer on top here, our truck hanger, and another bushing and a washer here. Now, as I said, all four bushings on the Legacy are different sizes. So these are the bushings for the front truck of the Legacy. These are the bushings for the rear of the Legacy. And these are all standard sizes that are available on Riptide's website. So for the front truck board side, they use a tall barrel. And for the front truck road side, they use a standard cone. For the rear truck board side, they use a street barrel. And for the rear road side, they use a short street cone. And I've measured all these using a durometer gauge. And these three measure at 90A durometer. And this one, which is the board side of the rear, measures 95A durometer. So you can just play with your durometers to find your preferred feel with the Legacy. You can also modify the Legacy by replacing your pivot cups to stop it from squeaking. And these use the exact same pivot cups as you'll find in the Yamaraki. So let's put this back together starting with the rear truck. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our big washer, followed by our street barrel, followed by our truck hanger for the rear, followed by our short street cone, and the washer on top, and our nut here. And there's our rear truck. And to put the front truck back together, first we'll take our flat washer, followed by the tall barrel bushing, followed by the truck hanger, followed by the cone bushing and washer, and then the kingpin nut, which slides through all of this, and then we'll tighten that down. And there's our Yao Legacy.